Hi there, BC Calc. This is your video lesson on Polar Area Notes 4.4. In this lesson, we are going to look at areas enclosed by polar curves. And in this case, we're talking about enclosed areas instead of under areas because you're not going to have a function that is um, vertical. So like in terms, when we do, you know, a function um, in terms of X, like F of X, we can talk about the area literally underneath. Uh, but when a function is defined in a polar way, um, we know that the function R, the radius is a function of theta. So it's basically a circular function. So the function goes around and around in a circle. And so we talk about enclosed, like in between a certain angle and another certain angle. And so this is how it would look. So if you remember that um, when we plot angles, you know, this is where we start at zero. And then this ray kind of goes around like this. And in this case, we're calling this angle here theta um, is A or alpha. And so like this is your alpha. And then if you keep going like that, this is beta. So this is beta right here like that. And so the question is, what's the area enclosed in between the angle theta and the angle beta like that? So basically the green region that you see here. Um, and the formula for finding this area is gonna be one half R squared D theta. And we're gonna take a look at why and where that formula comes from. So first of all, area of a slice of a circle is going to be given by the proportion the circle that this is times the area for the circle. The area for the circle is pi r squared. So this is one full circle. Now you have to take the full circle and basically um, take the proportion of it that you see here. So maybe this is like one fifth of the circle, right? If this is one fifth of the circle, then you would multiply the area by one fifth. Or if this is one sixth of the circle, you would take the area and you would multiply it by one sixth. So how can you tell what proportion of the circle this is? Well, the proportion of the circle that is enclosed by angle theta, which is between alpha and beta, right? So this is the angle in between. Um, the way that you determine what slice of the circle that is, is you just do a ratio. Um, so the ratio of theta to two pi, because remember two pi is the full rotation. So this is gonna tell you like proportionally what piece of the circle do you have? Do you have a fifth? Do you have a third? Do you have two sevenths, whatever? Um, and so this is the proportion that you have times pi r squared, which is the full circle. And obviously if you simplify that, you end up with a half r squared theta. So this is our area formula for this slice. So that slice is area, one half r squared theta. Now get the full area, we will need to integrate this as you might imagine. And we think about this almost like Riemann sums. So think back to Riemann sums. What we used to do is we used to break this up into tiny, 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 tiny little pieces. And so if you remember Riemann sums, they did the same thing, but you did it like vertically, so like that. So you would break up the tiny, tiny, tiny little pieces what was the height of the piece? The height was f of x and the width was dx. So you would multiply the height times the width and then you'd add them all up by integrating. So we're gonna do the same thing here. Now this theta, if we think about breaking this up into tiny, 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 tiny little pieces where the theta is almost minuscule, this is basically now d theta. So that's what we're going to see on this next um, on this next slide here, is that this theta is d theta, and the reason is because you're going to be thinking about breaking this up into tiny, tiny little pieces where the theta is um, basically infinitely small. And what you're going to do is you're going to take all of those infinitely small pieces and you're going to add them all up by integrating. And that one half is in front of the integral because obviously it doesn't matter if you put it on the inside or the outside. So that's how we get your polar area formula. Now let's take a look at an example. Um, we are gonna determine the area of the inner loop of R equals two plus four cos theta. So first we need to know what this looks like. And so I'm gonna ask you to pause the video and plot it on your calculator in polar mode. 
and make sure your theta limits are enough so that you can see the entire shape. Um, you can always play around with it if you're not sure. You can think about the, uh, the period of this graph. So cosine theta obviously has a period of two pi. But you know, definitely play around with it um, and see how it looks differently if you, um, you know, maybe zero to pi versus zero to four pi and so on. Now, once you plot it, you should see that. The question is, okay, um, this is clearly the inner loop, um, but how did it go? How did it start? You know, where was it? Did it go like that? Or how did it um how did it actually become this shape? Like what are these angles here. And these, these black lines were not part of the original graph. Um, the original graph is just the red. Um, and what you wanna do is you wanna think about, okay, when did this inner loop begin and end? So we need to know our alpha and beta for that equation. We need to know um, where to start the integral and where to end the integral. Um, so we know that it's this area and we know the R, but what are the limits of integration? Like where did this tiny little loop start and where did it end? So um, we see basically that, you know, this is the starting point right there. And so what we're trying to figure out is what was this? Like, what was that point um, at, what was, the, what was the theta at that point? Um, we know the radius at that point, was r is zero. Like literally this is no radius at all. So we know that r is zero. And so what we can do is we can solve this equation for r is zero using methods that we've learned in the past. So go ahead and take a moment and do that right now. All right, pause the video if you haven't done so already. So when you solve, um, you should end up with negative two equals four cosine theta, which means that your cosine theta equals negative two over four, so negative a half. And then if you think about when is cosine negative a half, it should be here and here. So cosine negative one over two. That means this is negative root three, this is root three. So this is basically like your 60 degree reference angle. And if you think about what the angle is in terms of degrees, this is 180 minus 60. So that would be 120. Um, this is 180 plus 60. So that would be 240. And if you convert those into uh, radians, so you would do times pi over 180. And so one of the angles that you would get would be, so this one divide by six, so two pi over three. And then the other one, 240. Again, for that one, you should get divide by six, four pi over three. So this is our A and our B. So that's what, that's basically where this loop starts and ends. So at, 2 pi over 3 it starts, 4 pi over 3 it ends. Now we go ahead and write the equation um, 1 half. This is the 1 half. And I put it inside here, but you could just do it on the outside. doesn't matter. And then this is the r squared. And then this is the d theta. And go ahead and um, plug this into your calculator. Use Math 9 to solve. And my tip for Math 9 is that it actually doesn't even matter if you're in parametric um, or polar mode or whatever. Um, because when you're doing math nine, um, you know, it, the only thing that's going to look different is how this variable presents. But whether or not you put a, a, a theta here or an x here or like a t here, it really actually doesn't affect the answer to the actual integral. Um, the integral is still computed the same way by you, by the calculator, by whoever. So you can be in whatever mode right now to like do math nine. So go ahead and do math nine. And once you do that, you should end up with 2.174. Um, and if you did not get that, make sure that you are in radian mode. So radian mode is very important. And that's the only mode that we ever use in this class. So that's it for polar area um, for today. And let me know if you guys have any questions. <laughs>